I would just like to say that this evening is right, W-R-I-T-E, to privacy. <laughs> I'm a woman constantly plagued by questions. How did we get here? What is the meaning of life? Can you really find a bargain at an outlet mall? Or have they employed the simple but crafty gimmick of grouping together stores in far-flung places like the Palm Desert to sell the exact same shit you could buy at the Beverly Center or in unfortunately named places like the Americana? But since you hauled your ass all the way out there, ate the Auntie Anne's pretzel without the butter, no salt, you might as well buy the two-pack of leggings from the Gap outlet for $30 because you think that's cheaper than the price you saw at the Gap at the Grove when you were shoveling haagen down your gullet as the waters of the fountain dance to Lou Rawls. <laughs> then you stretch those pair of leggings over your thighs you meant to thin down by joining Pilates Plus or CrossFit or the bar method because bikini, I'm sorry, one piece with a really large t-shirt on top, season, was right around the corner. Instead, you rip a hole into the legging, necessitating a return to a local gap, hoping they take back that two-pack you bought somewhere past Agora. And thank you, Jesus, they do. But then you see that two-pack of leggings at the Grove Gap is mysteriously $5 cheaper than the leggings at the Gap Outlet. And then you've gained all of that knowledge burning up $50 worth of gas in a down economy. <laughs> Y'all see what I just did right there? I let you in on the working inners of my free radical brain. You just sat through some shit that poured out of my mouth like bad hummus. <laughs> Ain't nobody got motherfucking time for that. <laughs> what I should have done was worked out my innermost thoughts on paper, figured out what I needed and what you needed to know. And right now, you would still see me as the flawless sister. Thank you, Hutch. <laughs> With the track and field legs that won't quit. As opposed to some sort of snack-happy asylum patient running relative uh, sunk cost scenarios in my brain. There are certain things that should be kept private at the written level. Now, I find it odd that my opponent came up here sporting the virtues of privacy through spoken means, knowing full well that since we got this assignment, in between doing his baby girl's hair, he probably hemmed and hawed over what he was going to say, probably while listening to some Anita Baker, holding a glass of Chiraz in his hand, talking to his man, and uh-oh, -uh, oh my goodness, had another pen, a pen in his other hand. Oh, what joy and privacy did he as abundant agency allow him to commit his private thoughts to pen and paper, only to portray that heady screed by spilling forth his unctuous genius to any and all available to hear what he had to say tonight. That indiscretion, utterance of hopes of swaying your conscience, yes, baby, this sister right here has $6 words. I have $50,000 words. <laughs> Much more expensive. Imagine what you could see what I have written on this paper right now. But I like to keep them private. But I digress. <laughs> what my worthy opinion did not do was serve you with the best of intentions, even though he tried. We have all been there, including me. I can remember October 14, 1985 at 11.18 a.m. like it was 27 years, 8 months, 5 days, 19 hours, and 12 minutes ago. <laughs> I was young and secretly in love with a boy named Manny. He had parachute pants and his hair was cut in a shag like Theo Huxtable and he came up to my chin. Yes, that motherfucker was fine. <laughs> know that I was weak from hunger and lunch was a whole six minutes away, but my knowledgeable teammate Shamika Roberts and I headed down to the bathroom and we passed Manny in the hallway. He had just gotten braces and he was even more of a stone cold fox. Shamika casually asked me, do I like Manny? And I told, she said, I won't tell nobody. I mean, this will be our secret, just as girls. So with all of the conviction my 13 year old self could muster, I told her, I guess I like him. Unbeknownst to me, Shamika was trying to get in with the Leninger Junior High Purple Pup Pup Squad. And she was vulnerable, so when she got into that cafeteria line with Shamil Gentry, the queen bee of the aforementioned Pep Squad, and she let loose the information she had sworn to keep secret faster than the sloppy joe and the tater tots that hit her tray, I knew I was in for it. I mean, she told the rest of the Pep Squad, including Vontae Mitchell, the super hoe who let Darius Floyd finger bang her at every damn school dance, and from there, my most intimate, personal information spoken to a trusted member of the Knowledge Bowl team, captain of the Mathletes 
for God's sake. Spread it like a contagion. <laughs> By the end of lunch, everyone knew, including Manny, who took pains to dump his lunch in the trash cans at the far end of the cafetorium. Part cafeteria, all auditorium. <laughs> I began eating lunch in the bathroom stall to get away from the stairs and the snickers and that hounded me for the better part of a week, or what I like to call a damn eternity. <laughs> oh, how vainglorious was my love of Manny and how I felt safe and secure in the innocence of whispered knowledge. Just a little transfer of air and sound on the ether. You may think you have formulated some sort of sacrosanct privacy by speaking, but all you have really done is given up your power over information left it like a family at some fucking karaoke bar. Don't stop believing. <laughs> Praying that another with ever-changing priorities doesn't leave you with your drawers hanging out. <laughs> Privacy, back in 1985, I should have affixed pen to paper in a book covered in pastel flowers or some sort of huggable bear holding onto balloons adorned with a lock and some impossibly small key and pronounce my deepest, most thoughtful desires right there away from prying eyes. Just the uh, fixed gaze of Prince and New Edition and Chad Lowe posters on my walls. <laughs> Dear listener, learn from my tragic mistake. Next time you want to keep some shit private, and remember this is a right to privacy, remember this handy dandy phrase, spoken by my friend Jane Morris. Close your fucking mouth and write that shit out. <laughs> And you know what? If the page gets too hectic, you can always do this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Won't start none, won't motherfucking be none. <laughs>